Welcome to Empower to Grow, the podcast. I am your host, Hanan al Basha, the business doctor. Following our conversations with empowered women who woke up one day and consciously claimed, I am more than enough, I am worthy, I am empowered to grow. And along their empowering journey towards realizing their own potential and their quest for growth, they became a beacon of hope and guidance for others. May you also find your inner power to grow. So, of course, we always like to continue our conversations and uh, I call it uncharted discussions because it just we don't know where it's going to take us. But um, I think one of the topics that Munir and I spoke speak a lot about and it is um, finding your own success parameters and uh, defining and redefining them um, for you very subjectively. Yeah in spite of and despite of societal uh, uh, expectations and uh, what we're supposed to be doing versus what we actually want to do. So where can we start with that? (laughs) Like, how do I see success personally, despite suicide, like what society thinks? Yeah. Yeah. I think for me personally, every day that I, I am myself, and every day that I'm, say, I'm expressing my feelings and how I feel and my thoughts and my opinions freely is me being successful. Um, I don't know. It, it never equated success. I think at a certain point, and I, I know I've shared this with you mm-hmm. um, a few weeks ago when we were talking about good life and... Mm-hmm. Um, Yes, to a certain point, it, success did equate to um, having a certain number of, like having a certain number of money, let's say. In yeah, the, the revenues and the profit. The revenues and uh, the profit and all of that. But I think at the end of the day, if you leave the world and someone is living a better life, just like slightly, like say 1%, 1% slightly better because you existed, um, I think that's, I'm going to call it success. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to call myself that I have succeeded. Yeah. Um, if I made someone's life easier and better, I would say I succeeded. Uh, for me personally, if I lived my life the way I wanted, uh, fully expressing myself and with how I see and how I feel, I would say I succeeded. So I like, it's, it's very personal. Success yeah. is very personal to me. It was never... It was never, and I'm, I, it, I'm, I'm going to be very clear and honest and say, I did not come here right away. That yeah. I did not, I wasn't born with this like thought process for the longest time. I did equate success with having like statue, with having um, uh, like a certain amount of wealth and uh, a statue in terms of a, a certain car or a house or things that you aspire to have to be yeah, called the successful. material gains the materials the material gains yeah but as you as I grew and good life grew and things changed um the way I see it have also changed it, it just became personal as yeah. I went by and yeah, I think I, that's, went by. that's what I keep talking about now it's about and, and you know it was the same for me as well and I talk a yeah. lot about this you know it's uh it's going from corporate career to private business to doctoral degree and then find, and then yeah. waking up one day and saying, I'm not happy. I mean, what did I actually do? And yeah. uh, what I talk about now, it's more of a concept of, I say, seek the internal gratification and fulfillment versus the external validation from, from what is expected of you in terms of, as we said, the, the material gains are yeah. uh, kind of equated to certain success levels. And if you don't yeah. have these, then you're not successful. But in essence, um, there is a story that I heard that really was was very touching in a way that mm. it was spot on. It's like, I can't remember where I heard it, possibly either they're an audiobook or a podcast, but they're like, there was this guy, um, he was... Um, uh, on a, in a small village on vacation and it's a coastal village and he found this man that came back and he was fishing he's a fisherman and uh, mm-hmm. he came back and he's like 
he only had a few fish with him. He's like, it's still early. Why are you early? He's like, I got the fish I need. He's like, what do you mean you got the fish you need? There's still like three or four more hours. What if you yeah. stay longer in the sea and then you get more fish? And then he's like, and he's like, and then you sell them and then you make more money. He's like, and, and he's mm-hmm. like, and then you get more boats or fishing boats and then you can hire people. And, and then, so, mm-hmm. you know, you build up your company, you build up a whole yeah. fleet and you create a multinational company all about fish. And yeah. then you have your own factory and you start canning and all of that. He's like, and, and then he's like, and then you, it becomes so big that you can sell it off and then you make, mm-hmm. all and then what he's like, and then you can go to a small coastal village and you can retire and he's like, yeah. and fish for your own, uh, you know, for your fun. And he's like, but I'm doing yeah. right now. <laughs> You know, yeah, I'm fishing enough to to provide for my family, to yeah. for the food they need, and yeah. to provide for them the finances they need. And I'm comfortable yeah. and I'm happy. Why do I have to wait 25 more years going through the whole yeah. process to get back to the same starting point? Yeah. And I think that is the, the hamster wheel that we get on because we're sold into that reality that it is, if you don't have this, it does not equate success. Versus, yeah, even even want? that, um, not just that, but also I think people want success very, the, there is a certain way that people know success. Yeah. Like we said, it's with material gains. And uh, even personally, when it comes to good life, like I get a lot of people family-wise and even like customer-wise, they will be like, why are you still here? Like, why are you still not, why haven't you not yet resigned? Why are you, why do you still have your day job? Yeah. Why do you still not have this? Or why do you still not have that? And people think, I think, people think success comes in a certain way. There's still milestones certain, that you have to pass yeah, through to be able to Once be. you open a business, you're okay. You can yeah. resign and... <laughs> <laughs> and we were You're talking about like, that and that's that's you the, have money and all of that's, that that's but the, it's not the that. biggest misconception ever like you know yeah. startups when you open up a business you put in literally blood sweat and tears for yeah. at least two to three years as per international standards before you can even yeah. start saying i'm breaking even or mm-hmm. i started seeing a profit it's not yeah. like you start the business and starts making money. It just doesn't work that way because you've got yeah. the capital expenses, because you've got the, the the running of the business, because understanding the dynamics of the market, there's yeah. so much associated with it that people- There is so don't... much. And if people don't understand, there is also privilege when some people say this, they're like, why haven't you yet, not yet resigned? And for people who come with money, it's different. There are mm-hmm. people that can afford- uh, resigning but in my case I can't afford it and other businesses say they were they had other incomes that they built their business on in my case it wasn't so we have also I think for people and society we have to check our privileges as we go before asking people those questions and before assuming someone is doing something and why they're doing it the way they're doing it yeah uh there is no right there is no right formula exactly and yeah and privilege plays a big role in it Mm. Uh, because once you're blinded by privilege you're sort of not seeing the person's story it takes away their story you're like just you're pushing your story on them yeah yeah. but once you you take your privilege out of the equation and you're sincerely like look at this person's story and look at their life and their choices then you're sort of say you understand and you become closer to that person and you understand why they're doing things the way they're doing it where are they in their journey you're not sort of like just projecting how things should be or how they should look well I think and this is what we we should be calling for more I know I call for it all the time and then that has to do with empathy Mm. and we for a lot of people we've lost empathy along the way and, and yeah. it is, it is being adamant that our, it's, you know, for a lot of people that that's how they deal, not only with, with judgment, with work, with relationships mm. and stuff. It is like my way or the highway. And mm. you know, there, there are a thousand ways to get to that same highway, by the way, you know, so yeah. it, it is, that is about having empathy, as you said, to, 
each of us, our worldview lens is completely different. Our yeah. world is subjective to how we've lived it and how we've endured it. And our yeah. hardships and our lessons and our testing circumstances are different. Yes, it could yeah. have the same headline, but the details are always different. Yeah. And again, this goes back to the business of where I keep saying, you know, there are a lot of people come to me, but, but there are other people doing this. I'm like, uh-huh. And there's only mm -hmm. one of you and you're going to bring your perspective in a completely different way. And yeah. there's a very, you know, the, the, the popular example of if you go to any supermarket, how many loaves of bread are there by how many suppliers, yeah. but people yeah. still need bread, you know? Yeah. But each I got a, a guy, I got a supplier friend calling me the other day, literally at 9 PM. And I was like, why, why, why? you know, <laughs> he was, he just called to tell me, he was like, are you seeing what's happening? I was like, what's going on? What's happening? And he goes, mm -hmm. and I think that's a blessing of me not sort of keeping up, but not keeping up. Yeah. Uh, like I keep up with what's happening in the industry locally mm -hmm. and like say food supply. Yeah. But I, I don't, I don't get consumed in it. Mm -hmm. I'm not like head obsessing into over whatever details, uh, not yeah. obsessing wh over what someone is doing i'm sort <laughs> of obsessing over good li what good life is doing <laughs> so he called me and he's like everyone is now becoming a supplier and blah 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 blah, blah. and i was like you called me at 9 p.m as I, I i have just left my business to just tell me this just to instill fear in me I was yeah. like, this is not, this is not cool. And this is not okay. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's sort of in a way people like people, like you said, people lack empathy yeah. of like, when should we say something to someone and does it bring them fear or does it bring them joy? Yeah. Like, what am I bringing to the conversation? No, <laughs> yeah, that's asking too much. That's asking too much yeah. for people to delve into the <laughs> Act of what their words would be would mean i i think we should to be honest we should I, ask I people actually to posted be about this I yeah about this yesterday i'm like what if we consider being influencing minds in any way yeah. as a privilege and yet a huge responsibility would, yeah. would we still be saying the same things would we still be approaching people the same way i don't think so and yeah. and that's the point we like people say stuff and they don't they don't care about what the implications are of what they say especially online yeah yeah exactly. especially online sure. i do i do to be honest sometimes i do i have my mistakes like all human do humans. humans do um but often i do ask myself okay what does this bring does this like just bring fear does yeah. this spark fear in people like what's my intentions behind it exactly uh, often i try to keep my content like i said in our <laughs> first, <laughs> in <real>. <laughs> first <laughs> interview um like i try to keep it like for to share the knowledge of what's happening, to shed some light on situations and subjects that I believe in um, and subjects that I support, for example. But often I try to stay away from something that's gonna just bring fe fear to yeah. people. Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if, but I've also had this conversation with someone because uh, for she posted something that I thought was fear inducing. And for her, it was, like I said, it was knowledge share. She was like, no, I'm just sharing the knowledge. Yeah. I was like, for someone like me, that was fear inducing. So it's always depends on also- On the receiving end, yes. On your receiving end. So often I'll be very mindful because as someone who suffers from anxiety and being worried mo almost all the time, I we do worry. That, by the way, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, but I I do worry about posting something that's then gonna make someone like their anxiety kick in, yeah. and they're gonna be triggers fearful. Triggers them in of, any way. Yeah, yeah, triggers them in any way. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we should all all be mindful, especially online, of what we share. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Considering and often like now more than ever especially with we're still sort of sort of but, but not really in a lockdown and quarantine and all yeah. of that and it's like it's it's, it's challenging times yeah 
it's it's there's so, so much still all, uncertainty that no one knows what's happening and it's more than ever yeah that we need to be empath- empathetic yeah, yeah so speculations yeah. are not helping either yeah yeah well this was delightful thank you for your time thank um, you for having me i think i know we can go on <laughs> i know <laughs> <laughs> this time we'll stop it being mindful and um, yes. having more empathy and yes. um and influencing positively and yeah. in in a way that um assumes the responsibility of whatever channels you're on yeah there are lives there are actual people on the other side of that screen and i yeah. think sometimes we just tend to forget that there are people yeah. with hearts and emotions and families and you know and as you and said, they're vulnerable priorities and vulnerabilities and we yeah. need to to really just be very conscious of that Yes. Thank you my friend. Thank you Thank everyone. You. Yet again, empowered you empowers others. Love, abundance and prosperity to you all. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Empowered to Grow podcast. For further engagement with a tribe of empowered women, join my Facebook group Empowered to Grow or visit my website www.hananalbasha.com. I'll catch you on the next episode and until then, know that empowered you empowers others love abundance and prosperity to you all